I will call to order the Monday, October 9th meeting of the Verona Common Council. We'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next, we'll have the roll call, please. Ms. Clark, if you would, please. Alderperson Diaz? Here. Alderperson Doyle? Here. Alderperson Gaskell? Here. Alderperson Linder? Here. Alderperson Riki? Here. Alderperson Steiner? Here. Alderperson Touche? Present. Alderperson McGilvery is absent and excused. We have a quorum, so we will proceed with the meeting. Uh, next on the agenda is public comment. If there's anyone that wishes to speak under public comment this evening, we would ask if you would come forward now. There should be a sign-up sheet at the podium. We would ask you to sign that and then also state your name and address, not only for our benefit, but for those watching at home. Um, we do not have public hearings under any of the other agenda items on the agenda this evening, so this is your opportunity for public comment. Is there anyone that wishes to speak this evening? Is Thank it on you. Now? Thank you. Okay. Should I start over? Sue sure. Schmidt, 410 New Age Circle. And we're the owners of the Ace Hardware Building property. And we, we used to run the Ace Hardware store there until about 12 years ago. Then we sold it. And um, so I'm here to talk tonight for a few minutes because you're, you're, I think later you're going to discuss the redevelopment of that particular property. And I guess I, I might want to say what our timeline, you know, how this affects us. So we weren't here when this was originally uh, presented in February, but I heard that it was quite well received as a project. And then for various reasons, we decided that personally, that Richard and I, my husband, that we wouldn't pursue the actual development of it because, well, basically we, were reti we are retired and we actually enjoy that. So. Then it got into the discussion of what was going to happen next, and our tenant, who happened to be our son, uh, they decided that they were, wanted to close the Ace Hardware at that point because of concerns about the price of the rent if we did something else or if someone else did it. And so they pursued other careers. So at that point, we decided, well, we would sell the property. So. We received a, a fair offer. We have an offer to purchase, and it's contingent basically on city approvals. And it, and it was a fair price, so we were happy with that. So at that point, I think the potential developer started working with the city. And like we think that right now it's kind of at a standstill. So our concern about that is that with a vacant building, that you have all the expenses of a building, but you have no income. And also with winter concerns, nobody's really too anxious to get out there and plow the snow and the sidewalks and everything. So we were advised, you know, that if this gets slowed down too much, that we should probably investigate, like leasing it to, we've had, you know, several people that have been interested, um, that, and it would involve a long-term lease. So I guess what I want to tell you is that if we get involved with a long-term lease, that probably this window of opportunity to redevelop the property would go away for a while. So for us, that's our concern. So thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody have any questions or? We're good. Put my address. If there's anyone else that wishes to speak, you can start working your way to the front. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak? Third and final time for public comment. Anyone wishing to speak? Seeing none, we're going to move on with the agenda. Next is the approval of minutes from the September 25th meeting of the Common Council. Those minutes were included with your packet. What's your pleasure? What's your pleasure? Move approval. We have a motion by Mr. Linder. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Gaskell. Any additions, corrections on the minutes? 
Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion to approve the minutes signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried. Uh, under Mayor's business, I have a few things tonight. Um, I did want to publicly recognize uh, Steve Rundy. Steve Rundy is the president of the Verona Public Library Board. He has been president for a long time. Um, he recently uh, was, uh, he was nominated and I was happy to write a letter of recommendation on his, uh, uh, on his part, but he recently was notified that he is receiving the Wisconsin Library Association Trustee of the Year Award. So we're very proud of that. That comes four years after we were named the Public Library of the, of the Year. Steve has served uh, 17 years on the library board. So he's spent a lot of time. Steve is just a, he's a great guy, does a, um, a wonderful job with the library board and we just wanna congratulate him publicly for that. I also wanted to mention that last week Wednesday we had the uh, MPO meeting here in this room uh, Adam Sayre did a, a wonderful presentation, and uh, following that presentation, there were some questions uh, that both um, Adam and I responded to. Uh, it went over very well with the MPO. Also in attendance at that meeting was Alderperson Steiner. Thank you for that, Brad. And uh, Jeff McCorsky, our city administrator. So uh, just a great meeting. Um, I know that Jeff has it in his notes, and so do I, about the annual EMS meeting. And just wanted to remind everyone that that meeting will occur next Monday evening at the fire EMS station at 7 o'clock. So it would be really nice and much uh, appreciated if we had a quorum for that meeting. So next Monday night, 7 p.m. at the fire EMS station. Um, I have a proclamation to read regarding Halloween trick-or-treat hours. And that is, um, in the interest of promoting Halloween safety for the Verona area children, I, John Holcomer, Mayor of the City of Verona, hereby proclaim the official hours of trick-or-treating in the City of Verona to bet be between 5 p.m. and 8 p.m. on Tuesday, October 31st. And that, is, uh, that proclamation is signed today. So be careful, it gets, uh, it gets dark early now. It snuck up on us rather quickly, so be careful when uh, we have both youngsters and adults out in the streets for trick-or-treating. And then finally, it uh, gives me a great honor this evening to uh, introduce our newest officer for the police department. So with that, I'm gonna ask Chief Coughlin if you would come forward, please. Thank you, uh, Mayor and Common Council for inviting us here tonight to uh, introduce our, our newest officer. Uh, just to give a, a brief introduction and then um, um, bring uh, Matt and uh, Drea forward. Um, the development of Verona's first ever police canine program began several years ago when we received a grant from Epic Systems to cover the cost of purchasing a dog, the initial training of the dog in our handler and some initial equipment. Since this program it was New to the Verona Police Department, there were many steps to take in order to develop the program prior to getting a dog. After the initial research and after the development of our canine program began, it was time to select the right officer to handle our dog. The process of doing so was quite involved, and Officer Matt Kyle was selected to become our handler in November of 2016. Officer Kyle has been an officer with the Verona Police Department since September of 2011. He also serves as a field training officer and as an evidence technician specialist. After being selected as our canine handler, Officer Kyle spent the next several months thereafter conducting research and helping Sergeant Christensen and Lieutenant Mark Horseman develop the program. As a result, Shallow Creek Kennels in Pennsylvania was selected as our vendor. Drea was purchased in Holland by Shallow Creek Kennels. Drea is a German Shepherd and she was born on September 11th, 2015. On June 26 of this year, Officer Kyle began training Drea at Shallow Creek Kennels. They completed a grueling six weeks of training together on August 4th, and on August 7th, Officer Kyle and Drea worked their first patrol shift together. They didn't get much of a break as if they got their first call during the first night together when they were requested to do a track for a neighboring agency. As a team, Drea and Officer Kyle are able to detect and locate illegal drugs, track and locate humans, including those suspected of crimes and those who may be lost or missing, and locate articles that contain human scent. 
Dre is also trained to protect Officer Kyle and apprehend suspects. In the last two months, Officer Kyle and Drea have been putting a lot of hours into training and her tracking skills have improved greatly. This training is continuous and ongoing. Also in the last two months, Drea and Officer Kyle have conducted some tracks of suspects as well as sniffed several vehicles for drugs. As a result of those vehicle sniffs, cocaine, methamphetamine, and marijuana have been located. A handgun was also recovered from a vehicle as a result of Drea detecting the odor of drugs coming from this vehicle. We are quite happy with Drea and we're very proud of the hard work she and Officer Kyle have done and will continue to do together for many years. I want to take a moment to thank Officer Matt Kyle and his family for the commitment that they've made to the Verona Police Department and also recognize Sergeant Jesse Christensen and Lieutenant Mark Horseman for the hard work that it took to get the program uh, researched and developed to the point that we are today. So with that, I'd like to introduce to you um, Officer Kyle Andrea. So I have a proclamation to read, but before I do, do that, I just want to thank you, Officer Kyle. This is not only a uh, true commitment for the canine itself, but also for the officer and the officer's family. You talked about 24-7. This is 24-7. So we greatly appreciate the fact that you have taken on this additional responsibility. Uh, we believe it's going to be good for the city. We hope it's good for you and the family and for the canine as well. So with that, I'd like to read the proclamation. Proclamation Verona Police Department Canine Drea. Whereas Canine Drea has been duly trained as a police canine to detect and locate illegal drugs, to track and locate humans who are lost, missing, or suspected of criminal activity, to locate evidence and other items, and to protect her human partner, and whereas Canine Drea will serve the city of Verona and its citizens as well as the citizens of other communities. Now therefore I, John H. Hokemer, Mayor of the City of Verona, do hereby proclaim Canine Drea to be, con uh, to be considered a member of the City of Verona Police Department effective August 4, 2017. And the proclamation is signed today. So rather than getting Drea too excited, we probably will not clap uh, right now. <laughs> but. If we could just take, I want to make sure that the family and anyone else who wants to take pictures, that you have an opportunity to come forward right now and take some pictures. You can come closer if you'd like. You're welcome. You're welcome. Anything else you have? Thank you again very much.
So with that, we will move along on the agenda. Next, we have the administrator's report. Mr. Mikorski, please. It's kind of hard to beat that. Police department and, uh, yeah. and dogs. Um, just wanted to uh, reemphasize what happened last week. Uh, the city of Verona got a great uh, feather in its cap. Uh, Verona was uh, named the 2017 best place to raise a family in Wisconsin uh, by uh, an online uh, firm called WalletHub.com. And even though it's it's just an online analysis, uh, they they compared Verona with 85 other cities in the, in Wisconsin. So you know, based on the numbers. Uh, we had the, the best place to raise a family. We should be proud of that. And I think it's, um, it's the decisions that were made in um, many years to get those numbers to, to work in our favor. Um, so I uh, wanted to uh, just remind everybody it's a, a great accomplishment and we want to uh, uh, use that to our advantage because we know uh, it's a great community. We want to show this off, and um, <clears throat> it's so far it's got the the biggest uh, social media response that that we've had. Uh, for instance, Facebook, um, the one posting got uh, 14,218 uh, uh, people uh, reactions, uh, people reached, which is uh, far more than what we've had for a lot of our other posts. So we want to uh, just reemphasize it <clears throat> as a, like I said, a feather in our cap. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> um, the uh, EMS uh, annual meeting uh, is next week, Monday, as the, the mayor mentioned. I uh, wanted to identify another meeting that's coming up uh, that uh, council may be interested in. Uh, Dane County Cities and Villages Association with the uh, Town Association is uh, going to have a, uh, a legal review uh, meeting on October 6th, I'm sorry, October 30th from 6 to 8 at Oaks Golf Course in uh, Cottage Grove. I think it would be a great opportunity to identify uh, all the, the legal changes uh, that, have, that are taking place and uh, how those will impact uh, cities and villages uh, and towns. Um, the uh, County M and County PD project, as you've seen, is, uh, is taking off and there's going to start to be uh, some uh, effects of that. Uh, the, the first one that we've uh, been identified is uh, Raymond Road starting on uh, August, I'm sorry, October 12th, uh, will be closed at the PD intersection. Um, this is a project that has uh, federal uh, City of Verona, City of Madison County money, and um, DOT, it's basically a DOT project. Uh, we will be posting a, a link, if it's not there right now, under our uh, uh, public projects, so that uh, you can get updates um, from a webpage that the uh, City of Madison is maintaining. Uh, but because the City of Madison is maintaining it, um, we don't know when those uh, uh, changes or updates are taking place. So uh, I'll try to uh, uh, send out notice, notices to council uh, and bring it up at council meetings when uh, certain things are happening uh, with that project. And this is the first one. Um, with that, if you have any questions. Are there any questions for Mr. Mikorski? If not, uh, Jeff, I also saw we should look for this maybe a little closer on Facebook last night. We were also uh, in another poll. We we're in the top 25. I think we were number 19 for best places to retire in the really? state of Wisconsin. And they looked at a number of things. They looked at affordability. They looked at education. Uh, I think it was activities and uh, just public safety in general. So another, for that. another one this week. Okay, with that, uh, we'll move to the engineer's report. Mm -hmm. The dates. Sorry. Uh, oh, sure. Let's, why don't we do this? I was going to do it on the end, but as long oh. as Jeff brought it up. Um, we're talking about dates for upcoming meetings. So we would just like to uh, run this by people tonight. <clears throat> if I get to my calendar here. So what we were hoping to do is on the 23rd of October, 
the Finance Committee is hoping to take, is take action to authorize the publication of the proposed budget. Uh, that needs to be done so that it can get published in the Verona Press. Then on November 13th would be our normal council meeting. We would propose that we do a committee of the whole prior to the city council meeting for the presentation of the budget. Then we would move the, on the 20th, we would do a city council meeting for the public hearing and approval of the budget and any other matters that we would need to handle under a normal city council meeting. The following Monday, the 27th, we would then not have a city council meeting. It would be the Monday after Thanksgiving. We thought that if there were some people traveling or have other activities. So let's talk about that first. Does that time schedule work for everyone? Okay. I'm not hearing any issues about that. And then uh, typically in December, we hold one meeting. And my suggestion, I wanted to throw this out there, if December 18th would work for the majority of us, that we would do a December 18th meeting of the City Council um, and not two meetings that month. Does that work? All right, that's what we're going to plan to move forward with then. Okay, with that, we will go to the engineer's report. Mr. Monpass, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Two quick updates. Uh, the Lincoln Street Channel project is, the construction is complete. City staff is working on the final paperwork and pay request. And today, a common city staff met with uh, Public Service Commission and the DNR on the pre-application for Well 6, which will be potentially located in the east, uh, city southeast down by Liberty Park and that was well received and so we're going to move forward with the application for construction uh, permitting through PSC and the well siting through the DNR. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Mompass? Uh, seeing none, I just want to, just so that the public is aware that Jeff Owes does a really good job of sending us his report prior to the council meeting. So I think that that's helpful. It provides us information, but I don't want the public to think that we're taking lightly the, the public works projects that are going on around the state. So we really appreciate those, those uh, activity reports. So with that, we're going to move on to committee reports. First is Finance Committee. Ms. Doyle, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Under agenda item 9A1, I'll make a motion for payment of the bills in the amount of $383,605.74. We have a motion by Ms. Doyle and the approval of bills. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Linder. Ms. Doyle, please. Sure. By way of explanation, some of the larger expenditures um, this go around include street crack ceiling for $55,000 <laughs> and uh, the Cathedral Point Park shelter construction for $57,642.06. You've heard the explanation of the major expenditures. Are there any questions for the committee or for staff? Seeing none, the motion is to approve the payment of bills in amount totaling $383,605.74. All those in favor of that motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. And that motion carries. Anything else from finance? No further business. Thank you. We will move then to Public Safety and Welfare Committee. Mr. Touche, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I make a motion, I'll make a motion to approve ordinance number 17-901, amending section 10-1-26 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Verona, parking prohibited during certain periods. We have a motion by Mr. Touche. Is there a second? <coughs> second by Ms. Ricky. Mr. Touche. Uh, this, this parking section is at, uh, near 102 Lincoln Street. Um, the, the property owner, um, has asked that the city put up um, some parking restrictions from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, CCOR business in particular. Uh, they found with uh, the, the um, VACT coming in, the amount of traffic coming through, they were having difficulties getting deliveries in, unable to get the large trucks in. Uh, this section that we want to prohibit will really impact three to four parking spaces only during those hours during weekdays. Weekends and holidays, it'll be uh, fully parkable. So that's the explanation. Thank you. Questions or comments for, for the committee or for staff? Seeing none, the motion before you is to approve ordinance number 17-901. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. That motion carries. Anything else from Public Safety and Welfare Committee? 
There is none. All right, thank you, Mr. Touche. We're moving on to Planning Commission. Mr. Sarah, please. Thank you. This is resolution R-17-049, approving a certified survey map to create two lots at 529 Commerce Parkway. The proposed CSM will create one lot and one out lot at 529 Commerce Parkway to accommodate a future building on lot number one. The Planning Commission discussed the certified survey map on October 2nd of 2017 and voted 420 to recommend <coughs> for the approval. Thank you, Mr. Sayre. Questions, comments, motions? Mr. Diaz? Uh, thank you. I will, I will move approval of resolution number R-17-049 um, regarding a certified survey map creating two lots at 529 Commerce Parkway. We have a motion by Mr. Diaz. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Doyle. Mr. Diaz, anything to add? No. Okay. Questions or comments for staff? Questions or comments? Seeing none, the motion before you is to approve resolution R-17-049. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. And that motion carries. Mr. Sayre, please. Thank you. This is ordinance R-17-902, rezoning property located at 841-857 North Main Street from mixed residential to neighborhood office. The proposed zoning map amendment will rezone 841-857 North Main Street from mixed residential to neighborhood office. The other properties located north and south of the site are presently zoned neighborhood office and the proposed rezoning will match those parcels. The plan commission held the required public hearing on October 2nd of 2017 and voted three to one to recommend for the approval of the zoning map amendment with the following condition that the zoning map amendment shall become effective upon Ford Development Group acquiring the property at 841 857 North Main Street. Thank you, Mr. Sarah. Questions, comments, motions? <coughs> Questions, comments? Mr. Steiner? Thank you, Mayor. Um, what was the concern by the one negative vote on that? Uh, the concern from the one negative vote was he would have preferred the property to be zoned commercial instead of zoning it to a residential type use. So he voted uh, against it for that reason. Thank you. Mr. Diaz, please. Thank you. Um, I, I have a couple questions, or at least one. Um, if it was zoned commercial, do you think the impact of the property there would likely have a higher impact on the neighborhood or, or a lower impact than what's currently proposed? Mr. Sarah? I think it would depend on the use. Um, I think generally looking at the use tonight from a residential use standpoint, senior living has a relatively low impact from a traffic and noise standpoint. From strictly a commercial standpoint, it would depend. So if there was an office <coughs> type use, that'd be a lower impact versus a restaurant or who knows what else. Um, but I think tonight right now, kind of looking at it generally, I believe this is a, a lower impact use generally to commercial. Go ahead, Mr. Diaz. Thank you, and, and I'm going to ask you to get out your crystal ball here, but um, do you think it's possible in the current economy for that to stay a farmhouse, basically, or do you think something's going to go there? Mr. Sir? Meaning if there was nothing before you tonight? If like, let's say, hypothetically, um, this was voted down. Like, do you think it would just stay a farmhouse forever? Oh, no. I mean, it's it's a three-acre site in the middle of the city. At some point, it's going to be developed. I mean, it's 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 been ready for development for a while, so no, it would change. I think I just want to make a general comment. I know I, I've um, gotten some uh, uh, concern from neighbors over there, and I, I totally understand what they're saying. Um, but I think considering the situation, this, the senior housing is the, the, the lowest impact to the neighborhood that you could you could realistically expect. And I, I, I think the city needs more senior housing. Um, so I think, you know, I, I totally get what they're saying. I think, but I think this is going to be good for the city, and I think even even for the neighborhood. Um, and I just want to <coughs> close by urging the developer if, if there's any neighbors concerns anything you can do to mit mitigate impact you know make it look nice which i'm, I'm assuming you're going to do anyway but i, I just want to urge you to, to to try to get along with the neighbors as as well as you can thank you thank you other mr touche thank you mr mayor um i'm in favor of this development i, I having uh, family members that are in memory care units right now and, and and having senior apartments i think is 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 a great value to the city but but the location for me, I'm thinking this is close to our downtown. Uh, we're trying to build up our downtown, and we're putting, I think, a very quiet, a very nice building there and facility. I and I'm not going. Uh, in no way am I against this one, but I do worry that if we fill up these lots that are close to our downtown with 
apartment style buildings in this that that isn't you know a business that's drawing people in does it really meeting our needs and our goals for the city so i think this is a very appropriate uh, building and something i want in our city but i'm just trying to think big picture about our whole city and wondering gosh we stick this in here and um it really just takes away some potential commercial space and and, and, you know, it's in front of a school. I really like the idea of something really quiet in front of a school, not a lot of traffic, likely could hit a, likelihood of a kid being hurt is low. But it's, I think it's something that we do need to consider when we look at these developments. That's all. Thank you. Other, Mr. Steiner, please. Uh, thank you. Just a, a follow up to that comment. And I think in our relationship with the school district, uh, this is a very good move on the city's part to, to put this type of development across from the school district because uh, I remember in, in the past there has been uh, businesses that have tried to move in there and, and they were going to bring in some type of a retail situation and the school district stepped up immediately and they were very concerned about the, the retail. and. Ever since they stepped up, we have not had any issues. So I, I think this idea is perfect for the relationship with the school district and also for the neighborhood. And we definitely need housing for our older citizens. These people want to have a home where they can still be active, where they can receive the care they need. But if they want to go out and play, they can arrange for a bus. The bus will come and pick them up. Each one of these developments has their own bus contracts. And they can go wherever they wish, whether it's to the dentist or drop down to the senior center or go to a play put on by the VACT. This is a win-win for the entire community, and, and uh, I, I hope that we all see that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Steiner. Other, Ms. Doyle, please. Um, I would like to echo Mr. Steiner's comments. I saw, thought the same thing about this location because one of the things I love about my daughter's elementary school is its close proximity to Sugar Creek Senior Apartments and they have great opportunities there to have cross-generational -generation, collaborations between the seniors living in housing and the elementary school students. So I would hope that there would be opportunities for partnerships along this uh, kind of nature for this development as well. So I think it's a fantastic site and um, in, in support of the proposal. Any other questions or comments? Mr. Linder, please. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I kind of agree with the fact that it's not ideal to have this on Main Street and uh, rather see commercial in general, but with the, uh, some of the things we talked about earlier with the being by the school, and having some residential back there it's i think this is the best we probably could hope for to uh, make a smooth transition to development on it the uh, project itself has only meets all the requirements as far as um, setbacks except for next to the dental association um, i thought i read that it's going to be more than 30 feet to the residential areas in the back with some screening which is good uh, it meets the density requirement it meets the height requirements they're not asking for a lot of exemptions and uh, also because some of the things you guys said too, I think this is something I'm willing to bend on as far as um, where it's located and uh, I hope this is successful. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Linder. Um, I support it as well. I've had my opportunities at Planning Commission to uh, look at various proposals here. Um, I think it's good. I'll keep my comments short. I would uh, urge you to approve it. Additional questions, comments, or motions? Mr. Touche. I would like to make a motion approving ordinance number 17-902, rezoning property located at 841-857 North Main Street for mixed residential to neighborhood office. We have a motion by Mr. Touche. Is there a second? Second. Se second by Ms. Doyle. Questions, comments? Mr. Sarah, please. Is that with the condition that was recommended yes. by staff? I'm sorry. Yes, please uh, include the conditions. And Ms. Doyle agrees staff. as well. Thank you, Adam, for catching that. For the questions or comments, seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. And that motion carries. Mr. Sarah, please. Thank you. This is resolution R-17-50, 
approving a conditional use permit to allow an institutional residential land use to be located at 841 857 North Main Street. The proposed conditional use permit would allow for the construction of an 86 unit senior independent assisted living and memory care facility at 841 857 North Main Street. The Planning Commission held the required public hearing on October 2nd, 2017 and voted 4 to 0 to recommend for the approval of the conditional use permit with the following conditions. One, a deed restriction shall be recorded on the property restricting the use of the property to an indoor institutional residential land use with age restricted housing for persons 55 for age 55 and older after for development group acquires the property and after the applicant records the certified survey map for the development. Two, the applicant and city shall enter into an agreement to allow the applicant to install plantings on public lands and to require the applicant to construct <laughs> a north-south bike pedestrian path connecting North Edge Trail on the city's outlot. And three, prior to recording of the deed restriction, excuse me, prior to recording the deed restriction shall, the deed restriction is subject to review by the city attorney. Thank you, Mr. Sarah. Mr. Touche, please. Uh, Mr. Sayer, uh, the plantings on city property, would um, that require the city to maintain them after they've been placed or would the um, property owner uh, do that? Mr. Sayer? That's something that we'd have to work out in that agreement. Um, I think initially is by thinking about it, it'd probably be something they would have to maintain it for a certain period. And then after that period and the, the plants are established, that'd be the city responsibility. But initially I think it'd be their responsibility to make sure that they are established and they survive for whatever that time period is. Um, with that, I have some additional concerns. Go Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm sorry. So, so how much say would the city have that um, could be? You know, I'm assuming the parks would maintain this after that set period of time. How much say would the parks have in what those plannings are? Mr. Sir, um, well, there's a landscaping plan in in the in the in this middle that's before you tonight, and that has kind of tentatively what the the plan is for establishing landscaping in that area. Um, the agreement would be separate of what's tonight, so the agreement would have to come back to the council for for approval as a separate item. So, some of the kind of the first question you asked, that's an item that we'd work out in that agreement as well. Um, I think initially, as we've looked at the plantings, we, th we think they're appropriate, but as we enter into that agreement, we'll have parks look at it again and make sure that they're comfortable with what's being planted in there. Go ahead, Mr. Touche. So I'm just trying to think of the order events here and contingencies. I would really like to see the parks approve it if this is something that they're going to maintain. Um, is that something we can add as a contingent to the motion for this, or is it something that we add later? Mr. Sir, we, we can do that later and I'll speak with Mr. Walker tomorrow and have him take a detailed look at that plan to make sure he's comfortable with it. I don't, I think it's something that staff can, we can work out administratively before the agreement comes back to you. Thank you. Mr. Linder, please. Thank you. I'll make a motion to approve resolution number R-17-050, approving a conditional use permit to allow an institutional residential land use to the to be located at 841 857 North Main Street with the three conditions uh, presented by Mr. Sayer. We have a motion by Mr. Linder. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Touche. Mr. Linder, anything to add? No. Questions or comments on the motion? Questions or comments? The motion before you is to approve resolution number R-17-050 with the three contingencies. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. And that motion carries. Mr. Sayre, please. Thank you. This is resolution R-1751, approving a certified survey map to create two lots at 841-847 North Main Street. The proposed CSM will create two lots at 841-857 North Main Street. Lot 1 will be for the senior housing facility. Lot 2 is for First Choice Dental. The Plan Commission discussed the certified survey map on October 2nd, 2017, and voted 4-0 to zero to recommend for the approval. Thank you, Mr. Sayre. Questions, comments, motions? Mr. Linder, please. Thank you. I'll make a motion to approve resolution number R-17-051, approving a certified survey map to create two lots at 841-857 North Main Street. We have a motion by Mr. Linder. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Touche. Questions or comments on the motion? Questions or comments? 
Seeing none, the motion before you is to approve resolution R-17-051. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried. Uh, next agenda item, Mr. Sarah, please. Thank you. This is discussion regarding a redevelopment project to be located at 118 South Main Street and 108 Park Lane. On October 2nd of 2017, the Planning Commission discussed a redevelopment project that would allow for the construction of two mixed-use buildings with 19,140 square feet of commercial space and 50 apartment units at 118 South Main Street and 108 Park Lane. The plan Commission postponed action on the development but requested the project be forwarded to the Common Council for feedback. Comments from the plan Commission included a desire to see the properties redeveloped, concerns about the building's design, and a desire to see the buildings complement each other. The Common Council is encouraged to provide feedback and recommendations to the applicant. No formal motion is required as action on the application was postponed by the plan Commission. Thank you, Mr. Sir. We are open for discussion on this agenda item. Any discussion? Mr. Diaz, please. Thank you. This is a question uh, <clears throat> for Mr. Sayers. Um, what's the timeline the developer and or property owners can expect? I kind of feel like I'm a little lost where we are in the, in the process. Mr. Sayers, please. Sure. So the concept was discussed by the Planning Commission and Council in February. Um, obviously, this is step three of the plan development process, which is the general development plan. Um, the general development plan was postponed by the Planning Commission. Uh, the applicant was directed to, to go back and make some design changes to the project. Um, when that goes back to the, the, the Planning Commission is, is dependent upon probably the applicant making those, those changes to it. Uh, you know, potentially it could go back in November or it could go back in, in December, depending on how quick those changes can be made and staff has an ability to, to review those and provide comments as well. Um, once it goes back and ultimately if it's approved, it still would need the precise implementation plan, which is the PIP. Uh, once again, that'd be a public hearing before the Planning Commission, which recommends the council. So ultimately, if, if plans came back in November for potential approval, uh, I think probably best case, the PIP could be approved sometime in January. Go ahead, Mr. Diaz. Thank you for that. I, I just wanna, so everyone's on the same page. I, I would love to see something worked out there. Um, if some of the traffic concerns could be taken care of. Um, I think I, I would much rather see that see a project there than a Dollar General or whatever. But, um, you know, on the other hand, I respect, you know, property owner rights. And if, if, if they decide, you know, that, that a lease or whatever is the best thing, I, I, I totally understand that. Um, I guess just, just so um, the applicant and everyone else is clear, my, my biggest objection was actually with the TIF amount. I don't know if, if where we are negotiating that, um, but I thought it, w it was a, a, a pretty good chunk of TIF dollars, which, which always makes me hesitant. Um, other than that, I think I, I, I had some other details and stuff, but I think the project has a lot of potential. So that's where I'm at. Other questions or comments? Mr. Steiner, please. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I agree with what Mr. Diaz just said, and, and I think we need to keep in mind that this has been a very loyal family to our city with their business. and. And to put them in a financial situation uh, that's negative is, is not fair to a, a very good family that has worked in our city for a very long time. And, and Mr. Sarah, I think anything we can do to, to speed this up and, and get a decision made so that they know um, it's only fair because they've given us many, many years of good service to our citizens with their business. and. Um, it's just been a good deal, and, and now we're putting them in a financial situation that I'm sure they wake up in the middle of the night wondering what is going to happen. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Steiner. Mr. Touche, please. Um, I, I'm in favor of development at this location, for sure. Um, I think what, what I see proposed, and when I see the cut sheets of the building, for me, that's not a downtown building. Um, it looks it looks like something I could see more in the outskirts of the city when I think of a downtown that's I don't picture something that looks like apartments that we already have around our city um, I personally not only with the amount of tip money that they're asking for um, but with how the how the building looks and how I believe it would fit in our downtown and the look we're trying to achieve there I don't think this is something I'm interested in um, I would rather 
you know, after doing some traveling, I've traveled for work. Some of you have already heard this story. I, I saw a brand new high rise go up in uh, Seattle that looked like it was built in the 30s and it was brand new. And I'm not saying we need a 1930s looking building in our city, but I would like something that seems more substantial, um, something that looks like it's part of a downtown and belongs downtown. For me, this, this multi-purpose building, which for me looks very apartment-like, uh, isn't something I'm interested in at this time. Other questions or comments? Ms. Doyle, please. Thank you. Um, I, I do appreciate the investment that this family has made in our city and um, you know appreciate what it takes to, to be entrepreneurial and small business owners here in the city, but at the same time, you know, it's our job as alders to be good stewards of taxpayer dollars and with the amount of TIF dollars, as uh, Alder Touche said, that are being requested for this project, I think that we really need to do more for the gateway of our, our downtown and would definitely be open to, to other ideas for this site, but at this time, I, I can't support for the amount of taxpayer financing needed to, to make this project move forward. Thank you, Mr. Additional comments, questions? I think, and I have not spoken with any of you individually, I think we all agree we would like to see this intersection or this property developed, but uh, as some of the comments that we heard here tonight, there has to be, uh, we have to look closely at the TIF dollars. Uh, it's one of the things that we're very fortunate in the city that financially we're well off, but everybody thinks there's an endless pot of money and there's not an endless pot, pot of money. TIF has been very successful for us, and we hope that TIF continues to be very successful for us. So um, I don't want anybody to take it as we don't want to see this property develop because I think each of us do want to see it done. Um, and I would encourage the applicant to continue working with staff and look forward to having another proposal brought before us. Any other comments, questions? If not, we are going to move on. Mr. Sayer, did you have anything else from Planning Commission? Uh, no, that was it. Thank you. Thank you. Then we're on old business, discussion and possible action regarding selection of a city council representative to the Planning Commission. Are there any nominations at this point? Ms. Doyle? I would like to nominate Alder Diaz at this time. Mr. Diaz has been nominated. Any other nominations? Mr. Touche? I would like to nominate Alder Linder at this time. Alder Linder has been nominated. Are there any additional nominations? Any additional? Seeing none, uh, we will have the clerk uh, go ahead. I, I don't have an additional nomination, but I do have a comment if that's... Go ahead. If that's allowed. Um, yeah, I think there's some confusion in the community about what this, this is about, and I think it's partially my fault. Um, uh, for not being forthright enough. I actually really like working with Alder Linder, even though we disagree. Um, I'm not sure if he's going to like working with me after this, but I enjoy working with him. Um, but for me, what it comes down to is, is, is I look at what happened at the last planning commission meeting, and I watched two commissioners advocate against real protections for the Ice Age Trail. Um, someone mentioned that housing that costs over $2,000 is affordable. I saw people scoff at an ordinance designed to prevent Verona from turning into a sprawling strip mall. And in general, I, there was a lot of classism, and I felt like people who maybe don't make as much money as a statewide lobbyist um, were being looked down on. I don't think that's right. Um, not to mention the, the, the comments about affordable housing. I don't think anyone's looking for the kind of <clears throat> affordable housing that was described. Um, nobody wants any low-quality development. Um, and honestly, with what's happening at the national level, I don't think this kind of fear-mongering and dividing people by income level is what Verona needs right now. Like, look, I've worked at Epic for over 11 years, so I, so I know you know, like the, the housing costs are just not as much of a concern to me, but I know that the city is more than people just like me. I want to see housing that works for people like a first year teacher, a factory worker, or a senior on a fixed income. Um, and I think we should, we should be open to people who don't make as much money as a high powered lobbyist. So like, yeah, I would, I would, I would love to come to some sort of agreement on this. Um, but I think we need a new voice on the planning commission to make it more representative of everyone in the city. Like it, it, it doesn't have to be me. Um, I'm, I'm more than willing to compromise on that, but I think it needs to be somebody new. Thank you. Any additional comments? Mr. Linder, please. Sure, thanks. Um, the only thing, I, I appreciate Mr. Uh, Diaz's comments. I guess the thing that I am a different, I'm a, I'm a voice, I'm not necessarily voting the same pe way or voicing the same as the people on the commission, so I feel like I'm being joined with them, and that's not necessarily the case. I mean, 
we have voted differently in the past and um, I'm being lumped in that's the word I was like I'm being lumped in at the same vote as everybody else is currently on the plan commission I don't think that's true thank you mr. Leonard Ms. Doyle please thank you um, I think for me what highlights uh, what Alder Diaz spoke to and just wanting a different voice in the plan commission and I've discussed this with other folks as well is you look at one of our agenda items tonight that was before the plan commission um, there was a set of, of feedback for what was it I believe it was the development at 118 South Main Street and 108 Park Lane from the plan commission that was asking for a lower density and then before the city council asking for higher density so it seems like there's very disconnected viewpoints on development in general in the city and again that's where I support Alder Diaz and thinking that we need a, a different perspective represented on the plan commission thank you any additional comments if not, I would ask Ms. Clark to read the roll, please. Alder Diaz. Diaz. Alder Doyle. Diaz. Alder Gasco. Alder Diaz. Alder Linder. Linder. Alder Riki. Alder Diaz. Alder Steiner. Linder. Alder Touche. Linder. And that motion fails. Uh, we are on to new business, approval of operator licenses. Ms. Clark, please. I have operator license applications for Joshua Mandel and Barbara Quick for Four Sisters, Brittany Tomaszewski for Vincenzo Sitko, and Patricia McDermott and Scott Fry for It's Time Bar and Grill. You've heard the applicants. What's your pleasure? What's your pleasure? We have a motion by Ms. Riki. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Doyle. All those in favor of approval of the operator's licenses signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried. We are on to announcements. Any announcements this evening? Ms. Doyle. Um, since we announced our trick-or-treat hours tonight, I would also like to announce that the Verona Chamber and the Farmer's Market are sponsoring a Main Street trick-or-treat event, also on Halloween evening, uh, from 3 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Thank you. Any additional announcements? Mr. Diaz, please. Thank you. I just wanted to publicly um, say thank you to the, the the Verona Chamber for organizing the Fall Festival. It was it was wonderful. My son had a good time. I had a good time, and I think a lot of other people had a good time. So I just want to say thanks. Thank you. Other announcements? Ms. Ricky, please. Well, if you're into theater, um, there are several opportunities. The Verona Area High School Theater production is this coming weekend, Thursday through Sunday, and then the following two weekends are VACT productions. So. Go see some theater. Thank you. Any additional comments, announcements? If not, before we have a motion to adjourn, looking forward to seeing each of you Monday evening at 7 p.m. A motion to adjourn would be in order. We have a motion by Mr. Touche. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Doyle. All those in favor of adjournment signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried. We are adjourned. <laughs>